You know, I'm as much a watch collector as I am a filmographer or a photographer. I don't really know the first thing about the gadgets, though I went ahead and bought the most compli complex, complicated to use um, Panasonic Lumix camera of 2014. Never mind the fact that I bought it seven years after its launch. But really, that's just me, a tech hoarder, and uh, I don't know, I'm a fan of things that go click click or tick tack. So, yeah, as soon as I had the necessary financial means, I just went ahead and bought two watches. So, one's a smartwatch, the rather interesting looking and really well built Huawei GT2 Pro, of which you can find the link to the review here and also the Casio Lineage Titanium of which you can find the link attached but really I wasn't going to stop there so naturally I went and bought the most affordable automatic men's watch that I could find this Orion right here but before we get on any further with the review let's do a proper unboxing so, before we get on with this review, I just want to get to open this package right here. Excuse my wraps and uh, enthusiasm as I try to open this bag filled with other bags. And I will show you a surprise from this local um seller from which i got the watch here it is and here is the orion watch quite a nice box but i also got a bonus watch so i'm going to give them a shout out right here and just so we are clear, I have no affiliation with them, though I wish I did, because the sponsorship would be nice right about now, since I spend all my money on useless and obsolete tech stuff. And here is the Orion watch. Now, I'm actually kind of nervous because I haven't really seen this thing up close. Now, in typical Japanese watch naming um, tradition, this thing is a rather mouthful and as I hold it here I'm going to quickly read the name it's called the Fer FER 2D001 B0 and I have no idea what that refers to probably the mechanism itself but we'll get to that later in a moment now the construction it's a rather uh, compact if average looking watch um, it's an analog uh, display it has a case diameter of 42.6 millimeters including the crown and without crown it's only a 42 millimeters um, dimension uh, it's water resistant to 50 meters and uh, the thickness is about 11 millimeters um, it's quite a nice handsome looking fellow but yeah that's the general look of the watch I say we go in depth and try to find out a bit more about this thing and see whether it's um, worth your time yeah this is an awful pun the mechanism um, in my opinion functions very well and um, over the course of uh, 12 hours I haven't really seen any significant loss in uh, accuracy so less than three seconds plus or minus is okay for me over the course of 10 to 12 hours given that I will only be wearing this thing occasionally so um, yeah not a huge downer not a deal breaker I also like the the way you can set it up so you pull the crown just a 
step a, a smidge to adjust the date. You can see the date moving. And that's it for the date adjustment. And if you need to adjust the time, you just pull it twice. You can hear this. Let me just zoom in so I can properly show you what I mean. So you pull once for the date. And twice to adjust the clock. But as you can see, uh, it's still moving while you can while you adjust it. So I think that's a plus. It's not something I mind, though. Uh, really, um, some people might consider this overly simplified. But yeah, that's the general look of the watch. I say we go in depth and try to find out a bit more about this thing and see whether it's um, worth your time. Yeah, this is an awful pun. So here it is, the Orion um, automatic watch. The movement is provided by an Orion Caliber 48743 automatic self-winding mechanism, which means that if you wear it over the course of the day, it will ensure enough energy from your wrist movement to keep the spring going and keep the mechanism turning. turning. Well, that's the gist of it anyway. Uh, I don't really like the fact that when I move it around, I hear a slightly unnerving sound. So uh, I don't know if that's the spring or the mechanism or something else, but it's not really elegant. It's not concerning in any way, but I don't really like it. Let me see if I can catch it. So it's like a creaking of some sort. Anyway, this is the back of the watch and let me just zoom in so I can get more uh, detail. And just to focus on it. And there we go. Uh, the construction itself uh, lends something to be desired. I mean, the the dial itself and the writing it is really spot on. So the quality of the markings on the on the watch itself are great. Uh, a slight letdown would be the uh, really the the way this thing was plated somewhere on the internet. I have found information on this as being IP plated. I don't really know what that means. I know what chrome plating means because I'm, I work in an industry and at a factory where we do th stuff like this, but on plastic. So this is a um, shiny gloss paint like surface, though it might not be paint. I don't know how it holds up against scratches or um, other dents. This finish, I'm certain it will not be on par with my Casio Lineage Titanium made watch, nor will it be on par with my uh, GT2 Pro smartwatch, which by the way, again, feels much more premium than this one. Uh, the leather um, strap just seems to be a bit off compared to um, my um, GT2 Pro watch. Again, they're not the same class and they're not supposed to be similar um, items, though I sorely wish this was the same quality as this one. Uh, I don't know, there's something about the leather strap. It is leather and it is okay, it's just not as luxurious or well well uh, thought out and uh, soft to the touch, special to the touch as this one's. So yeah, it's not a letdown, it's not a comment on the watch itself. Uh, there's some materials that are um, a bit um, compromised in order to keep the budget at 
the correct uh, mark. Why I choose this watch? Well, I just like the black, uh, the white on black uh, numbering on the dial. I like the old black um, and the old black finish. I think it's elegant yet a bit sporty, a bit manly without being over the top. What I would have preferred instead of this was the one that mimics pilot's watches, you know, that has uh, in, the numbering is with seconds instead of hours. So instead of 11, it would have 55, instead of 12, it would have 60 and so on. Those Orion watches are pretty nifty. I like those better, but they were a bit more expensive and I just I decided to make a small compromise in terms uh, in uh, in hopes of saving budget which I certainly did since this thing cost me as I've said eight, the equivalent of 88 euros shipping and a small present a small gift included while well, the pilot uh, models which I'll link into the description and also I'll mention here on the screen were about the equivalent of 200 and two, or 250 euros. So let's draw a couple of conclusions on this watch. It's uh, well built, but it's not premium grade. Uh, it's quite unknown in typical Japanese watch naming um, <laughs> affair. So nobody knows, really knows what it is. They just know it's a cheap model and it has a weird designation made of numbers and letters, which doesn't make sense to anybody. Um, it's got a well calibrated mechanism. I have, I have had zero problems with it over the past few days. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's fine enough for a beginner. Um, on the downside, I would say this is a collectible item, though it's not necessarily a valuable one. Um, it's really a timeless piece and you won't make a fool out of yourself while wearing it. Uh, though I wouldn't show it to any, um, you know, watch aficionado or stuff like that. They will, they will think it's rather cheap and uh, a poor attempt at um, establishing uh, prestige. Um, the reason I got it, well, it's been really a, a plan of mine to acquire a few representative watches out of each period. So I have this one. My daily driver is a smartwatch. It took some time for me to decide whether I wanted a smartwatch or not, but I got the what I believe to be the best at a reasonable price. I also got this one for special occasions and being that it's an automatic, it's representative for a period and fashion of watches. And also I got this nifty looking titanium made quartz watch which uh, self adjusts automatically and is really an homage to 80s uh, watch fashion if you will if that makes any sense to you so i got three watches which cost me in total about 350 euros which is not much by any means but it's not really pocket changed either at least for me I don't know if that's a justification or a conclusion. I certainly don't regret getting them and I don't plan on getting rid of them anytime soon. So I guess that's been it for me. And uh, as always, remember, I buy quirky, useless, obsolete tech stuff so you don't have to. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.